Today, I have been tasked to talk about management of lower anterior resection syndrome. And I believe that this problem is frequently faced by all colorectal surgeons who perform rectal cancer surgeries. I do not have any disclosures. When we talk about outcomes of rectal cancer surgery, the most important outcome for the, both the patient and the doctor is an oncological outcome the ability to perform a good TME and transecting distally an adequate margin to ensure an RO resection. However, a functional outcome is equally important and will affect, as I will show later, the quality of life of the patient in the long term. Anterior resections have become a standard for all rectal cancer surgeries, except for the very lowest. And as opposed to before, where the very low rectal cancers would have undergone an abdominal perineal resection, with the advent of technology like surgical staplers, high definition laparoscopic equipment, and robotic surgery, surgeons are able to go lower and lower into the pelvis, performing precise TME and distal rectal transactions, thereby allowing lower and lower anastomosis. Another factor that contributes to the development of LAS is radiotherapy, which has become a standard in all locally invasive rectal cancer treatment in the form of new adjuvant chemoradiotherapy. Before I proceed further, the outline of my talk would be number one, the definition and diagnosis of LAS, the incidence. Then I will go towards discussing a little bit about the pathophysiology of the condition. And lastly, the treatment of this problem. There is no consensus definition on what low anterior resection syndrome is. But Brian et al. nicely defined it as a disordered bowel function after rectal resection, leading to a detriment in the quality of life of a patient. The symptoms of LAS can be varied. Patients can present with incontinence, abdominal pain, urgency, frequency. They might wear a pad. In fact, in this systematic review, looking at symptoms defining lower anterior resection syndrome, you can see here that the authors have described 31 symptoms that patients may complain or present to the surgeon after low rectal cancer surgeries. In an attempt to assess the severity of symptoms for LAS, Emerson and Laubert came up with a LAS score in 2012. This was validated by Joule in 2015, and it had a very high sensitivity and specificity for major LAS. If you look on the right-hand side here, this is the LAS score. And to summarize it, the symptoms that the last score assesses is incontinence, urgency, and frequency. The assessor will ask these questions and a final score will determine whether the patient has no last, minor or major last. The incidence of last depends on the method of assessment. If we use the last score as mentioned earlier, there are reports that major loss occurs in up to 42% of patients. However, if you use the Wexner score or the MSK score, these differ according to the studies done. It is safe to say that 80% of all low rectal cancer surgery patients will have some symptoms. This is a retrospective observational study done in UKM, looking at 129 patients who had an anterior resection for five years. And we found that up to 34% of patients had some form of anterior resection syndrome, of which 18% had major loss. It is no surprise that the lower the anastomosis was, the higher the incidence of loss. When we looked at the factors associated with the development of major loss, our findings concurred with many other findings with regards to the fact that patients with major loss had preoperative radiotherapy, 
they had a low anterior resection, had a defunctioning ileostomy. This is a European study looking at the quality of life in patients with low anterior resection syndrome. It was a multi-center study in five centers in, in Europe, and they assess about 800 patients. What it shows is that patients with major LAS as opposed to minor LAS had a lower quality of life and a reduced physical and mental function. And these patients also develop higher amounts of fatigue, pain, sleep deprivation, and interestingly, financial difficulties. They concluded that the higher the last cause, the more affected the quality of life. The pathophysiology of last can be attributed to three main problems, mainly reservoir dysfunction, dysmotility, and sphincter damage. When we talk about reservoir dysfunction, meaning we're talking about the space that the rectum creates for stool to collect under normal circumstances. Now, when we remove the rectum, what happens is that we are in effect causing that room to be diminished in size. And when you have a reduced amount of rectum, or if you remove the entire rectum, then the new rectum or the new rectum that is created never functions like what was given by God. Other than talking about the physical size of the rectum, it is also discovered that reservoir dysfunction is directly or indirectly caused by the innovation of the remnant rectum and the descending colon during mobilization of these organs. We are all very aware of the various important nerves in the pelvis, and many a times these nerves can be injured or damaged, causing significant symptoms of loss. This is a picture that illustrates how the neurorectum rectum should accommodate when stool comes in. So when there is stool that accumulates in the rectum, then the neurorectum rectum should by right expand. However, it was discovered that instead of expanding, the neurorectum rectum actually contracts. So there is this paradoxical movement that causes stool to be pushed forward instead of being stored. Now, why this happens is also because the fact that when nerves are denervated due to the surgery, we find that there are these spastic waves that occur within the rectum itself, causing erratic bowel movement. Another potential cause for LAS is sphincter damage. Now, sphincter damage can occur in many different ways. For example, even with introduction of a transanal stapler, this can cause direct damage to the sphincter. Of course, again, nerves that supply the sphincter can be damaged due to surgery, radiotherapy. Radiotherapy, in fact, actually does cause a certain amount of scarring to the sphincters. And of course, if we perform an intersphincteric resection, inadvertently, a certain amount of internal sphincter will be excised. This is a study that was done by Professor Xiao Chen in Singapore with his colleagues about 20 years ago. And very interestingly, what they did was that they had a look at the sphincter integrity and the manometry of patients who underwent stapler anastomosis versus those who did not perform a stapler anastomosis. What they found was that at six months, patients who had the use of staplers did have a reduced resting anal pressure and sphincter damage. However, the pathophysiology of LAS is more often than not a combination of all three factors of reservoir dysfunction, dysmotility, and sphincter damage. Treatment of low anterior resection syndrome is multimodal. Now, many of us, when faced with a patient complaining of any of the symptoms mentioned earlier, will instinctively prescribe some form of medications. Loperamide is one of those, I'm sure, and it does help reducing the frequency and improving continence. However, probiotics are not effective in the treatment of LAS. Serotonin receptor antagonists also help to improve outcomes 
especially in symptoms of incontinence, urgency, and frequency. However, I'm not aware of this uh, medication available in uh, Malaysia. The next step that we can offer to our patients is some form of pelvic floor rehab. And one of the easiest things that uh, can be done by the patient themselves would be some Kegel exercises done at home. Now, interestingly, Kegel exercises have been shown to improve incontinence. However, symptoms do persist. And if a biofeedback treatment is available, then it also has been shown to improve outcomes. One of the modalities in biofeedback that has been shown to increase rectal sensitivity and therefore allowing the patient to recognize that it's time to go to the toilet is the balloon expulsion test. Another modality of treatment is transanal irrigation. What it aims to do is to clear the rectum of all stool at regular intervals, therefore avoiding the symptoms of LAS, such as leaking, incontinence, urgency. This is a study done by Professor Christensen. It was a systematic review looking at 17 studies of about 1,200 adult patients. What this study showed was that transanal irrigation did succeed in up to 47% of patients to reduce their incontinence. And a big majority of them, of more than 80%, had an improvement of overall last symptoms. This is another study looking at transanal irrigation and how it did improve quality of life. It was a prospective study of 14 patients who had a median duration of symptoms of about 19 months. What they found was that these patients went to the toilet eight times in the morning and three times at night. And by doing transanal irrigation, they managed to reduce the number of defecations to one to two times a day and zero at night, therefore resulting in a marked improvement of their continence scores and quality of life. Another modality of treatment, which has been traditionally prescribed for patients with incontinence is sacral nerve stimulation. How sacral nerve stimulation works in LAS is that it helps to stimulate the nerves at the pelvic and central level instead of only working on the muscles of the anal sphincters. It also is shown to decrease the anterograde and increase the retrograde colonic motor activities. And finally, it does impair postprandial changes in rectal motility. This is a systematic review looking at sacral nerve stimulation. It did show that patients who had this form of treatment did have a decrease in fecal incontinence and an overall improvement in quality of life. For all intents and purposes, to be practical, once a patient presents after low rectal cancer surgery with symptoms of LAS and an assessment using a LAS score or a Wagner score is done, then the patient should be prescribed some basic medications like loperamide and even taught how to do some Kegel exercises. However, if this fails, then it is worthwhile to attempt some form of biofeedback therapy and retrograde irrigation. If sacral nerve stimulation is available and if, and if the symptoms are recalcitrant, then it can be offered. And finally, if all else fails, there have been times where a stoma is needed to improve the quality of life. Interestingly, many of these patients have had a stoma after index surgery and last occurs after aleostomy reversal. And you will find that these patients come back to you begging for their stoma to be recreated. In an attempt to reduce the incidence of LAS, various surgical modalities have been described. So let's have a look at that because I feel that it is very relevant to the topic. And this is a study that was looking at colonic j pouches versus straight colorectal anastomosis. It was a multi-center prospective randomized trial in Italy. And what they did was that they followed up the patient at six months, 12 months, and at two years. 
and they assess the quality of life and bowel function of the patient. What they found was that bowel function and quality of life did not significantly differ between whether you do it a J pouch or a straight colorectal anastomosis. This is another study that was just published this year comparing end-to-end -end versus end-to-side anastomosis. It was a systematic review and a meta-analysis of RCTs. Out of the six RCTs comparing almost equal numbers of patients between end-to-end -end versus end-to-side, looking at anastomotic leak rates in bowel function, what they found was that leak rates were significantly more in patients who had an end-to-side anastomosis. It did not result in an anastomotic stricture or an overall morbidity. But what it did show is that patients with an end-to-side anastomosis had markedly improved waxing scores at six months. Now, whether this study would change your management would remain to be seen. Finally, it is important to realize that there are many other conditions that can mimic lower interior reception syndrome. And the differential diagnosis of radiation enteritis, malabsorption, even disease recurrence is something that needs to be considered. And the patient adequately worked up before being labeled as simply having low interior section syndrome. In summary, the incidence of loss is high and it would depend on the methods of assessment being done, most commonly the last call. Why LAS develops is really a combination of reservoir dysfunction, dysmotility, and sphincter injury. What we do know from the various studies is that severe LAS does affect the quality of life and treatment although it can be difficult, is multimodal. Thank you.